Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for what is a data asset. A data asset is a file inside of our editor. Here's one right here that contains data. So let's look at them and how we'd use them and how we'd work with them and why we'd want them. First thing, data assets require C++ as of Unreal Engine 4.22 in order to work with. You have to have a C++ base class in order to create a data asset. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we right click new C++ class, we'll type in data asset and you can create a data asset from here. So we'll just call this one my data asset as the test. Once it creates it, obviously it's going to compile your project and add it. And you'll have this available as the base parent to use for a data asset inside of the editor. So here is my project. Here's my new data asset that was just created. We're going to look at the other ones I created before. And it's empty. It's basic. It's got new data asset as our parent type. And the C++ is empty. And our header is just the base body. Cool. Now let's look at one that I've worked with. This is the one I showed you before. This is my enemy info. It's got more information. But there should be nothing different than you would normally expect. Data assets should hold data that you can then pull from and do stuff with. You don't want to use these to hold data that you manipulate. These are just primarily used for like initializers or base information. So in this case, you can see I have four properties. A string name, stack mesh, damage, and strength. Now these are edit anywhere. They have to be edit anywhere or when you open them up inside of your project here, these will not show up. So if none of these values show up when you open your data asset, they have to be data. They have to be edit anywhere for the information. Blueprint read only gives us access to the variables themselves. So in our project, here's my example that we're working with. If we pull off of our data asset and we go down to our variables, we find all of the getters that I've set up for these properties on this data asset. You can set it to read write. I'd recommend read only because you should never be writing to these and this makes it easier because you only have getters. You can have functions. So in this case, you can see I have two functions. These are really simple. All I'm doing is grabbing the damage and the strength values and returning that information back. You can have them callable or pure. In my case, if we look at our example, you can see here's my asset. Here's my callable version of calculate damage, returns back my float and my pure version, which returns back a float as well. Again, it's C++. These are things that your programmers will be exposing to your designers, so your designers can just simply easily manipulate this information inside of our blueprints in our project. Lastly, down here for more advanced stuff, you can have structures. We have a structure called item, for example, that contains some item information. And we have an array of items, array of item called items. And if we look at that inside of our here, you can see I have our individual item struct, and then I have our items array, which I put five other items in. Now, the nice thing, if you think about it, if we use this for data information, here's my enemy. So we declare the base information for our enemy. And then maybe the enemy has items, starting equipment, for example. You could actually make those more data assets that you could then manipulate. Maybe you have a data asset for a long sword, a short sword, and it contains all the information for that data asset for clothing, let, you know, starting clothing, more advanced clothing. And this allows you to easily define in your editor all the data that makes up this individual unit. And then you would manipulate it. So how do we manipulate it? We have a blueprint here. Well, first of all, I should step back. How do we actually create a data asset? Well, it's simple. Right click miscellaneous data asset. You're going to choose from a class of all the applicable data assets in your project. You can see in here we have a lot of default ones that comes with the editor. But then we also have this one, my DA underscore enemy info. This is the one I created. You have to create your class in C++ to get this to show up because it has to subclass from the U data asset. That's why this is required. Let's go with data asset and we'll call this one Pixie. So I'm going to make a Pixie character. Our editor 
our designer goes in here, you know, they name it whatever they want, they set up whatever they want, so, I don't know, I mean, this is all the demo stuff, here's a question mark, maybe they have 25 damage, and they have 2 strength, and then we set up all their default items, we're good, boom, we have a pixie now, now we just simply insert this data wherever we want it, I have my blueprint enemy, what this does is we are using as a mock-up of an enemy. It's got a mesh. It's got a name. It's got some stuff in it. None of that really matters. All that matters is I have a data asset variable exposed. So that way my designers can simply go, hey, let's get rid of this one and this one. We have a black orc and a goblin. I want another character here. Boom. We drop in an enemy blueprint. We now have a blueprint right here. Maybe this is to the left of my path and the right of my path. What do I want this to be? Well, let's make it a pixie. We choose our data asset, and boom, we now have a pixie. Our mesh is set up, our name is set up. Whatever we've done, whatever we've decided, it's pulling that information from our data asset. Later on, okay, this is supposed to be a goblin area. Let's change that. Let's change this to a goblin, and we'll change this one to a goblin. And now all of my enemies are goblins. All I did was change out the data asset. Later on, we change the art. Rather than going through and having to change a master blueprint for all the art, or maybe we have subclasses of goblins or whatever we've done. We have a data asset, which has all of our information. Our data asset has things like our meshes. So if we simply change that in our data asset, all of our other items are changed. Now, I did this on construct, so of course, I have to move it in order to work. But the point is, it pulls it all from the data asset. Therefore, data asset changes. Everything referencing it changes. Looking inside of our blueprint, we just have our data asset. And we grab our information we need. So in our construction script, data asset. Again, we have access to all of our variables. So I grab the mesh and the name. And we do whatever we want with it. We hit begin play. You'll notice it says 11, 11, 11. All I'm doing is saying, hey, data asset. Grab me the calculated damage using this function and print it out. And of course, if I use the callable version, it's going to be the same thing. It's the same thing on the back end. But this could be whatever you want. You could have it be information regarding threat. You could have it be information regarding damage. Information regarding, I don't know, a random set of words that they yield back. Whatever you want, it's a function. It's access like anything else. You have a data asset as your object information. And then you can call the function on it. Or you can get your variables back from it. Just makes it nice and simple. Now in terms of data assets themselves, one advantage they have over, let's say, a data table is these are easily modular. So for example, I have, if we had, let's say, a enemy, and the enemy pulled the information from a data table, then the entire data table needs to be manipulated and changed if you're changing one thing. In here, I only have to change this one object, and it's not going to affect anything else. I'm not going to tread on someone else's. Someone could be working on orcs, someone could be ob goblin so i'm working on pixies and all their information and we don't have to worry about one master table being manipulated and overwritten by other people we just change our associated information secondarily data assets work with the asset manager system so what is that let me go ahead and compile this you'll notice when we started i had a goblin and an orc i went ahead and made a new one called a pixie and I've done no changes to the actual code anywhere else. I haven't edited any blueprints. I've just simply created a new data asset. If I hit play, and then I hit my list assets button, what's going to happen is it's going to show us Pixie, Black Orc, and Goblin. It's going to show us all three of them, all three of these data assets. Yet I haven't told any blueprints that I've made a new asset. I haven't referenced it or done anything. The asset manager basically, when it's set up, so as a quick overview, I'm not going into detail. The asset manager here has been told, hey, I want an asset type called enemy info. It's going to be of a data asset class, and it's going to be in this folder. Keep track of it for me. I may want to use it later. And then whenever things like a compile is run or the project's open or the project started, it goes through and it creates a master list of those assets. And we can easily show you that. Let's copy and paste the pixie. We're going to rename the pixie to a fairy. And then we're going to edit the pixie over to super fairy. And I don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. All my example does is grab the name. So now we have a super fairy. I'm going to go ahead and my designers came in. They've decided, whoops, I meant to compile. They want a new class called a fairy. And we're going to use that. 
and then, oops, we have a bestiary. It's a nice index book that lists all the information about all of our characters in the game, all of our enemies. Crap, I need to add a new enemy. Now I need to open up that blueprint, and I need to go in there, and I need to tell it we have a new fairy class, so that way it can at least know about all the information for the fairy, and then it can do whatever it wants. Or, using data assets, I simply create the new data asset and let the asset manager handle it. I can hit play, and we'll hit list assets, and you'll notice once that goes away, our assets now list the super fairy. Again, didn't change any blueprints, just create a new data asset. Asset manager, when it was updated, said, hey, you now have a new asset. We have four enemy assets in here. Let me put that in the enemy asset list, and then you do whatever you want with it later. The action RPG example, which is on the Learn tab, covers this in more detail if you want to look at it by basically using the same system for their potions and their inventory type stuff. So you can pull up the shop. The shop will use the asset manager to look through and figure out how many potions there are and what types and display all those potions in the nice user interface. Later on, the designer decides, hey, I want a new potion that's going to go ahead and give double the health back. They create the appropriate assets inside of the engine, and then they hit play. The asset manager finds the update information, and that's it. The store is updated automatically. They didn't have to do anything else except create the actual data that the project uses. And that's it. That is a basic summary of our data assets. Created in C++ for the base class. You can create them using miscellaneous data asset and selecting the appropriate class. You edit them like anything else inside the editor using the data asset editor. And then you can access information from them just like anything else if you have a reference. In this case, I'm exposing a public data asset to my blueprint. And then I get access to all of the parts of that, such as my names, my meshes, and anything else I've just defined inside of here.